I'm standing in for my aunt, Paula Gloria. I'm Natasha Maureen, and today my guest is DeAndrea. Welcome, DeAndrea. <laughs> it's so good to be on this show, and I'm so excited that you are the one hosting it. I'm very touched because you're the same age as my daughter, and to be sitting next to one of her peers is very exciting and heartfelt for me. Aww. So, Well, I'm glad I could do that for you. But So what exactly is your story? My aunt told me, I think, on a vacation once, but I don't really remember the details. Would you like to share? Well, my story is quite a story. <laughs> um, it's very important in life to be very selective in who you marry. And if you get involved with somebody who doesn't treat you right, and then they say they're sorry, um, please forgive me, you should not forgive them. You should walk away. That character is not the right one. I made the mistake of marrying somebody very bad. And he did horrible things to myself and my child. And he ended up, I finally got the courage to serve him with divorce after so many years of being married to this monster. And in 1995, I had a process server come into the house and serve him with the divorce papers. He left the marital home, and everything was fine after that. Mm -hmm. All abuse was gone, and my daughter, she was then six years old, and she was so happy. She was doing so well in school. Her grades went up. You could see the report card for the yeah. first half of the year when he was living in the house. And the second half, when he was out, her grades went up dramatically. And she was so happy. But she did reveal something, um, a form of abuse that I did not know about while he was in the house. Uh, it, it was sexual abuse. And I didn't report it because my daughter was so happy and she was doing so well and there was no reason to yeah. put her through trials and all that. He was gone. Okay. So do you agree with me that that, that would have been an okay thing? Yeah. So I mean, you don't want to bring it back up again and have to relive don't things like that. You don't have to. Right, if you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, if he was living in the house and different still, story, that's yeah. different. So. Um, Time went by, he was denying paternity. The reason he was denying paternity, he didn't want to pay child support. Oh, so he was saying, this isn't my child. Yeah. So he knew it was his child because he couldn't impregnate me. So we had to go to New York Hospital and have what's called artificial insemination. They had to take his semen, put it into a tube, and shoot it up me. So for him to deny paternity yes. made him look so stupid <laughs> but so uh, he the judge finally said after months and months of him denying paternity listen you're gonna have to take blood tests so he said forget about it there's no reason I should spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on blood tests I know it's my child yeah so then he admitted it and then there was child support involved now and he was uh, about $30,000 in the arrears of child support, which means he was behind paying. And uh, he kept, uh, then, then he st decided it's cheaper to have custody. Because if you have custody, uh, I had my daughter in ballet, gymnastics. She had a private French tutor. She was in the track team, the swim club, um, piano lessons. Uh, so she was very, very active, active yeah. and also, which didn't cost a lot of money, she was a full-time member of the church. She was in the ch children's church um, Bible classes, and she was also in every children's church play. So, you know, there's a little money there involved because you have to pay for the costumes and yeah. all that stuff. So he figured if he gets custody... The roof over her head is completely free because he's living in his paramour's house. That's that's another term for tramp. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's a legal term. That's what you could put in legal words. You say paramour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and she was rich. Mm -hmm. So she was be. He'd have her paying for everything. 
And uh, so we're going through this custody thing, and he uh, he's starting to get angry because now he's being forced to pay the child support. So he beats my daughter on a visit, and he beats her in public where it's seen by many people. And I reported it to the police. When she came home, she told me what had happened. I went to the police station, and everything was fine. They interviewed my daughter, and they said, you know, yeah, you know, we're going to arrest him. I said, he lives way out in Long Island. They said, it doesn't matter yeah. what he did to this child. He's getting arrested. So the following day, I called up the police precinct to find out, you know, have you arrested my former husband? Or he was my husband at the time still. We were separated. And the uh, detective said, why did you tell us that your husband is a detective? I said, because that should not be an issue. We're talking about child abuse. Yeah. Are you telling me you don't arrest detectives who abuse? And that's really what it was, because he never got arrested. What? Just because he was a detective. Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that's she's crazy. learning. <laughs> 18 years old, and now you're learning that there's a craziness in this world. It's even crazier than that because detectives are friends with judges. And the reason they're friends with judges is because they have to go before judges when they have cases. So my husband was a detective for 20 years. A lot of friends. He had a lot of friends. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So what now? Where is your daughter? So what happened was uh, I... He, after the beating and he wasn't getting arrested, my daughter fell into deep depression. So I sent her for a psychiatric evaluation. And by accident, they found out about the prior sex abuse, which was two years before. We're now in 1997, mm -hmm. and it was 1995 that the sexual abuse ended. So I said to my daughter, you know, you could talk about all the things your father did to you, you know, how he killed your dog and how he beat you and all the, all the, but I think we should leave out the sexual abuse. And she said, that's okay, mommy. I don't want to talk about that anyway. So that was cool. But the psychiatrist asked my daughter, uh, asked of my daughter to have a physical examination because that was kind of the rules of the hospital. It was a big hospital over here, Bellevue Hospital. And uh, so she did, and so the doctor's examining her. She's just a regular medical, but she does the strangest thing. While my daughter is lying on the table naked, she spreads her legs, points to her vagina, and asks her, did anybody ever touch you down there? And you know that children have spontaneity you did. Weren't you spontaneous when somebody would ask you a question? Yeah, I just kind of... Now you think, because you're yeah. older. <laughs> but when you're a kid, you just... Hurt. So she said, yes, my daddy used to. And that, I was sitting in a chair, and I almost fell off of it. I went, uh-oh. <laughs> um, and the reason I went, uh-oh, is I knew he was connected with the system, and I knew something bad would result from that, yeah. from that, and it did. Two and a half weeks later, they broke my apartment door down. They took my little girl, six years old, crying, put her into state custody, kept her in, in and out of six foster no-care homes, because she was abused there too, not sexually, but severely mentally abused shuffled her in and out of these places for five years. Now, at that time, there was a five-year statute of limitations on sexual abuse. So after the five years was up, they gave my husband custody. Why? Why did they take her away from you in the first place? Not like you did it. Did they think, did she, he just like tell them that or something? Sort of. Yeah, his friends were helping him. Um, keeping her in the state custody for five years was protecting him. She couldn't testify against him. 
because she's in state custody and they wouldn't let her testify against him. She never testified against him in court. That's crazy. I know. This is a wake up call. This is this is reality of what happens like with the police and, and uh, judges and um, because when I was your age I thought the policeman was your friend. Yeah. <laughs> this is another side of it. Um, and my daughter still doesn't know to this day. They, the judge, by the way, the family court judge put me in jail for three years. I've only been out for a couple of years. I, I was incarcerated in 2002 and I was released in 2005. And uh, so it's only a couple of years that I'm out. The, uh, they were, the judge was so angry because I have a photograph. I caught my husband masturbating in bed with my daughter. And the judge knew about that picture. And I still... Doesn't matter. Nothing mattered. So I took the picture. I put it on television. Because as your aunt has this program, I also have a show. Mm -hmm. And I put it on television. I didn't tell the people that this was my daughter and this was my former husband. I said, Judge Helen C. Sturm from the Manhattan Family Court gave this sexual uh, pedophile custody of this child. And so she worked with him. He helped her to get me into jail by, they gave him an order of protection against me. Now you see, I'm, I'm little, right? I'm short, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm tiny. He's six foot four. He owns five guns that are legal and about 50 guns that he took from uh, criminals, stole from criminals. And has, you know, like 50 illegal guns in his yeah. house. And they gave him an order of protection against me. So what he does is he goes back into court. He says, I violated the order of protection many times over and over again uh, because I had this TV show. And by talking about the case, even though, like I said, I never mentioned his name, I never said it was my husband, and I never said it was my daughter. Yeah. He said that harassed him. So he had like 10 counts of harassment against me. What? <laughs> and I was sentenced what, for each show. For each, yes, for each program. Not only for each program. There were times I passed out flyers. I got counts for the times I passed out the flyers. That's not harassment, is it? It's not just like kind of free speech. Like I can say. Yeah, g yeah. Just please speak about this. Yes, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. It, it's called just what? because he was the, like the cons. What's the word? The cons. Constitution. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Constitution. Of course, I did everything legal. I never broke the law in my life. I don't have any record. I still don't have a record because I was placed as a civil inmate for three years, not a criminal. So I don't have a record of arrest. Isn't that weird? So I was kind of like kept secretly in jail. But the saddest part, they used my daughter. She was um, 11 years old at the time. And they manipulated her into testifying in court against me, saying that that program harassed her too. She, can't, she can't even see it. So they put me in jail also because of what she said. So they made her like say things. They made her say things that weren't she true. She had no idea. She's 11. Like. She's 11. She had no idea she was putting her own mother in jail. So at one point, my lawyer goes, oh, we need a, research, a recess, rather. Recess. We need a recess on this. So he says, I need to talk to my clients. So we go outside, and she says, I thought your daughter loved you. I said, I haven't seen my child in a year and a half. I said, obviously, they brainwashed her, and obviously she has no idea she's sending her own mother to jail. So he goes, okay, does it, do, you, do you mind if I let her know? You know, it's going to have to, I have to be tough with her. Yeah. I said, fine, let her know. She should know. So 
he goes in, back into the courtroom and he says, did you know that your father has your mother on trial to go to jail here and you are putting her in jail? And everybody goes, objection, objection. So my daughter is like, like this, you know, confused. She doesn't know why everybody's standing up objecting. Yeah. She doesn't realize they were trying to get a point to her. And then the judge yelled at my lawyer, you know better than to do that. Can't say that. That's a big no-no. Why is it a big no-no? No, no, no. I mean, she like, should. I yeah, know. She should know. She should know. That's so. Um, so where is she now? She. They gave him custody. So she's with him. I haven't seen her in seven years, and she's totally brainwashed against me. I. A friend of mine drove me to the house, and I called for her, and she ran away from me. I. I had uh, private detectives give her letters from me. She never called me back, wrote me, nothing. She's just, it, it's been indoctrinated into her head that I went to jail because I'm a bad person and only bad people go to jail. She doesn't even know she was a part of a huge cover-up and a huge conspiracy because she doesn't, like you or her age, you're sh in shock that a cop yeah. could get away with this. But that's what happens. Well, doesn't she know that, like, this could possibly happen? Wouldn't she look further into it? To I think they've dummied her down. Yeah. She's under mind control. She's so, like, focused on whatever they tell her. She is trained, like, you train a dog, sit, yeah. give me your paw. She's been trained like that. She has no mind of her own. And she doesn't look beautiful like you. She's wearing too much makeup. She's dyed her hair carrot top red, you know, like an unnatural color. She's doing drugs. She smokes. She drinks. So you are the perfect example of her friends. When my apartment door was broken down and she was taken away from me, her little friends who are now grown up in your age are just like you. But she's different because she's not herself. She's lost her identity. That's so sad. I wonder if there, if, if there was anything you could say to my daughter if she was watching this. Um, I'd tell her to open her eyes, think for herself, and like my aunt was saying, that like the internet has a lot to offer, and you can learn from things from the internet. And if she was watching this show, she just should just by hearing your story and everything that happened. I mean, how much, like, could somebody possibly be brainwashed? Unless that's Isn't that amazing? Brainwashing is an amazing thing. It's, it's, she's that brainwashed. The, um, also, there, I mentioned to you the photograph when yeah. she, he was caught masturbating. I caught him masturbating in bed with her. And um, she testified in court that they, he was never naked in bed with her. She lied. Or maybe she didn't lie, she just didn't remember. You know? It's more likely that she didn't remember, but that picture but is. If she been, saw the picture, you'd think she'd be yeah. like, okay, that's me, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's not right. Exactly. And uh, I, I wrote her a letter recently. I, I told her a friend of mine would like to buy her a new car because. My former husband is so wealthy, he owns four cars, fancy cars, mm -hmm. including a two-seater BMW, and he bought her a piece of junk that looks like it came from a garbage lot, beat up old car, and my friend wants to buy her a new car, and she hasn't responded to my letter. Is she getting letters? I don't know. I don't know that for sure. But I do know when the detective handed her a letter yeah. in her hand, she didn't respond to me, so I don't know. Oh. What would you do? <laughs> what would I do? If you were Deandre or the daughter? If you were me. That was you. Um. Pretending, let's pretend you're the brainwashed child. Uh, would you... <laughs> and you're trained 
to mommy's bad stay away from mommy and she's crazy and she's dangerous you know um well it's hard because you know, being brainwashed you know like the little term of it she doesn't have control of it so you have to like either feel sorry for her that like she doesn't know any better but then yeah what do you do i mean that's your daughter you want to see her again you want to love her again Um, pray for a miracle. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll pray for a miracle. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I have to tell you, I'm so excited being here with you because it feels like, a, a, you know, I get a sense of, of her circle. You know, all the, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old kids, they all, they're all in the same environment. And it's just, just heart wrenching to, you know, have you here and hear you. <laughs> I think about my mom and like how she would feel being in your position because I'm her baby, you know. <laughs> it's devastating. Yeah, it's absolutely devastating. It's like uh, it's taking a piece of your heart and just ripping it out and, you know, destroying it. And and she's not being treated well. And I, I just want to get her back and home and safe and to get her she used to be uh, filled with spirit. She was like yeah. short, the shortest one. All of her friends were taller than her, but yeah. she was the tough one. She was the leader. <laughs> All these tall little girls, you know, same age, would be following my daughter around. Yeah. And I just want her to get that back and, and to have fun. And, and I also included in the letter, I'm concerned that they're sending her to a community college and I really want her to go to a university yeah, yeah. and she's which college you you were looking at schools today right yeah um, well today I went to Queens College but I was looking at FIT the other day and I want to go into fashion maybe and that's why I'm in New York so that's an excellent idea and that's a good school yeah I think it'd be which fun. which college in Queens Queens uh, um, community I college I think so city yeah college. FIT would be better in comparison to yeah yeah I'm also looking at colleges like in New York and California so I don't know I took some courses um, just very recently just a few months ago mm -hmm. in um, Kingsborough Community College it's absolutely gorgeous if I had to choose a community college I would go there Kingsborough you said? yeah it's on it's on the water and the bay yeah it's beautiful grounds it's so meticulous I read every time I had a lunch break I went out there to Outside, sit there. yeah it's beautiful you see the seagulls and it's, it's really nice yeah when I, living in Hawaii like my favorite part about like my school has a gorgeous campus it's in the you can see the whole valley and it's in the very back so it rains and it has like the gorgeous mountains and the ocean and scenery like location is very important yeah it <laughs> is and it is because you have you. to deal with it full yeah. time <laughs> NYU doesn't have any um, campus, but it's the best college, but yeah. it's very expensive. I know. It's yeah. hard to get into, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to go into something creative, film, acting, fashion, I don't know. This way you can go on with your life, and yeah, FIT is excellent. I love New York, like getting here two days ago, like today walking to um, my aunt's apartment, just like walking in the rain around here is gorgeous. Isn't it awesome? The city vibe. And when I was your age, uh, girls and I, we when we'd walk around the city, if it was raining, we would take our shoes off and just go barefoot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do in Hawaii. But <laughs> here everybody's into shoes. And I'm like, well, I go barefoot. I guess. Well, that's why shoes. it makes it more special here in New York because <laughs> nobody does it. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's true. like why follow the crowd? That's a good point. But um, so. Uh, you said you said you were looking at FIT. Um, 
if you do, if it turns out you you stay in New York, mm -hmm. where are you going to live? Well, FIT has housing, I think, around the, the little, they have a whole block of the city, I guess, and then there's apartments, some dorm styles, and, and I think they give you housing there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so. And la later on, if you start earning your own income, you could, you know, do a share. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. And it's yeah. a nice area. I wish you so much luck. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so how many? <laughs> so we have two minutes to wrap it up. Well, um, do you think your daughter would ever actually watch these? She's so controlled. It's, there's a chance that she will never see it. She is so controlled. She's had multiple programmers working on making her believe the truth is a lie and the lies are the truth. So it, it's difficult, but there is a deep pro programming process. It takes two weeks, but you have to have a deep programmer with her 24-7. actually seven. really people have jobs oh. like programmers. Oh, yes. Programmers. Oh, yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I was doing a television program out in Long Island last week and I met somebody who actually works with deprogrammers. Yes, um, they became very popular during the 60s when children, just like you, as normal as you are, and you think it can happen to you, were taken into religious cults and told to forget about their parents and their parents were no good and, the only, and they had to dedicate their lives to God and it was really dedicating their lives to the cult. Yeah. And um, so once in a while, parents would be able to kidnap Drag, their kids yeah. out of there and, and then put them into a deep programming process. And I saw one of those on Channel 13, the actual, the real kid, he really messed up. And they showed excerpts of from day to day, day one to, took 14 days and he was completely. considered that for like. I can't because, see, they, they've got her where she won't go near me. Uh, see, they, they thought of everything. Yeah. If she won't go near me, and I can't, can't talk to her. Yeah. And uh, she's, you know. Well, what about, like, someone like me? Could I, like, get her email or something and just, like, I I, quick, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it would do anything because I don't know what the severity of brainwashing is, but if you could kind of just, if I could just do something, I would, like, love to do that. That honestly. would be great. That would be great. She won't. She probably won't connect to you because she has an aunt. Mm -hmm. no, she is an aunt. She uh, she has a um, a niece. Mm -hmm. That's my granddaughter. That's your age. And she contacted. She found her on MySpace. Oh yeah. And she emailed her, but but my she daughter didn't. never emailed back. And here's her relative. She could connect with her own relative yeah. that she's never met. She's never met her niece. She didn't even know she had nieces. She has oh. a few nieces. But this one is computer savvy and she got on the internet and yeah. tracked her down. So, but it would be nice to try anyway because you never know. It's like it might be that one moment that her head is clear. Well, I was really uh, moved and informed by your story today, and um, I'm religious, so I'll be praying for you and your daughter. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. It must be really hard. And thank you. I'm sorry. So, thank you for sharing with me and other viewers. And yeah. I'm Natasha Maureen, and this is D'Andrea, and that was Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. Thank you. Rabbit Hole. <laughs>